Hello everyone, uh, Flavien Vidal with uh, Max Zaki Motor and we are with uh, 1994 Honda Activan. So that's the two-wheel drive version, not the four-wheel drive. So the advantage with that usually is that uh, they've all mostly only been used in town, like just to go from point A to point B, like uh, over and over again. This one used to belong, you can see actually some stuff, so if you check here, so I can't read it anymore now, but uh, it used to belong to some uh, rice shop. I uh, was just probably using it to go from yeah, point A to point B, deliver whatever rice is they sold. And uh, yeah, so it's been like, it hasn't been driven much. It's, uh, it's uh, so it's 1994, but it's only been driven. Let me check. 74,629,000 km kilometer, and that's the original mileage. So that's that's pretty low for, for a car this age. Uh, so we're gonna go with the details with that one. Uh, you'll see the body is pretty nice, uh, other than some scratches, it's been like really like no bangs or anything, <coughs> no bangs or anything, and uh, yeah, so the body is an overall like pretty good condition. So let's go over the main ding on the car here, so uh, probably backed up into something here, and there are like some bigger scratches just here. Up. Uh, and this one you can see so it can be like if you have like a decent body shop in the US can do that for really cheap uh, as I've explained like we don't do body work because body shops really massively overcharge in this country it's really stupid expensive for for absolutely no reason compared to the US or Europe or anywhere or anywhere else so yeah uh, what else uh, that's about it the rest is gonna be scratches here you can see on the paint so that can be probably po be polished out can I even yeah it looks like some I don't know but yeah let's consider like tiny scratches here scratches here uh, yeah there's just a bunch on the plastic also the bumpers are fairly nice scratch here scratches here 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 a bigger one here probably from opening the door over and over and hitting the same thing over and over again uh, but but other than that uh, it's pretty nice so those would need to be sanded and just like respread and just some uh, typical from those uh, with the, all the sun that we get in Japan it just end up like paint peels and it rusts the next winter so yeah uh, yeah other than that here like some i'm not sure what it is but some mark it's not a scratch it's just some paint thing we can check the, the roof roof is very clean no dings nothing even the paint is pretty good which is fairly rare for for kevin as i said they usually end up being parked outside their entire life the paint usually peels not on this one uh, we can get with the interior let's start with the roof uh, the roof the trunk uh, really spacious uh, we will you will see in a bit we can uh, move the uh, how it's called so I'm gonna do it on the other side so here you can see really like no dings no heavy stuff was thrown in there uh, so it's in a, it's really flat and good condition no rust either. I'm not removing it completely. That's where also you have access to the engine, which is you've got the engine plate here. But then I have to like put it back under there, and I don't have a screwdriver. So yeah, it's this side is fine. This side is more annoying. So yeah, I, I don't want to deal with that. Trust me, there's no rust. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, you can see the access to the engine right there some uh, harness thing just there if you have anything to attach it's a bit oily uh, here no rust good condition some oil here that shouldn't have put my finger more oil so it's been like this is really well maintained i mean there's no rust uh, really no rust anywhere so really good condition apart from the scratches up here you've got the original jack and tool if you get a flat or something can I put it back 
maybe not. Yay! Uh, yeah, under there, good condition, a bit dirty, like, but other than that, it's nice. We've got a five yen coin here. Okay, I'll leave it for the for the person who buys a van. And one hundred yen. Okay, I'll take this one. Yes. Give me a sec. Up. Hey, I'm rich. Okay, I'll leave that for the next buyer. So if you buy that here, hidden right there, you have 1,005 yen just for you. Uh, up. Yeah, let's get with the, well, let's get to it the other way around for once. Uh, up. Seats, a little some marks there, here and there. Um, yeah, you know, it's not... Those cars are really treated like shit by owners, so just to have just little things like that, it's really nice. The door panel is not super nice. Here, I heard something move, because there's something else here. You get, so, that's the windshield washer. Up. It's fine, yeah, not moving. Uh, Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you can move. Hey, -o. up. Then you pull on this thing here, and you move the entire thing down. And now you have lots of space to move out or whatever you you, you need to do. Uh, here, the open panel like decent. You know, scratches look a bit old, but that's nothing abnormal. Up. Here, a little bit yellowed, so we need to be like, uh, you know, polished. Here, I don't know if I showed the scratches there. Up here, pretty big one. Now we can start the car. If I can find... That's my keys. That's the key. So it's a fuel injected one. Stop beeping, thank you. Fuel injected, that's why it starts and it's right away like stupid low idling that's perfectly really super smooth. Can you even hear anything? You can't really hear shit. Uh, yeah, not much to say really. When I first started it, the um, uh, clutch bearing, the clutch bearing, yeah, the clutch bearing was a bit loud, uh, but just driving it, and it's not noisy at all anymore. So, um, yeah, just needed to be driven, I guess. Ah, uh, you've got some weird monster here. Hey. Uh, I don't know. I have a customer who wants it. Maybe I'll leave it in the van. Maybe I'll give it. Maybe I'll give it to him. We'll see. Up. Uh, as I said, absolutely no gas whatsoever. So I hope I can make it home. Uh, air conditioning. Compressor works. Can he see the idling go up? But it's not cold, so yeah, not good. Well, uh, if we'll need a charge, I bet, uh, I will ask uh, our, our boss if we can charge it. Uh, it's in R12 probably, I doubt, it, I doubt it's uh, R124, but uh, well, we'll see. And that's gonna be it for the walk around. All right. I'll be back with the test drive, knowing that I only have like uh, eight minutes, nine minutes of video left. So yeah, gonna have to keep it short. I'll be right back with the walk around. All right, we're back with the test drive. Uh, the clutch is, so I'm being very careful with the clutch right now. The clutch is super grubby. Like <laughs> it just like pulls, wants to pull your back, your, your foot right away. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really, really grabby. Let me close the window. Okay. So not 
super hot weather right now in Japan. It's about like 19 degrees or something like that. Celsius, of course. Uh, we're not in, in Quebec or something, but uh, yeah, still pretty cold. So anyway, how does that van drive? Uh, it's got. I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it has power steering. Like I have. It's the first K van that I see with power steering, and it's like the lightest, lightest van, like the lightest steering ever. Like if I throw it hard enough, just like the inertia could almost make me turn. It's <laughs> it's really really crazy. So first a K van with power steering in 1994. So a bunch of things happen. Uh, I think it's end of 1993, 1994. First fuel injected K vans uh, by Honda. So yeah, starts anytime. Woo -hoo. Uh, so sorry, it's like a mini jump. Uh, first fuel injected K vans uh, and uh, yeah, obviously power steering apparently arrived. Uh, I'm not sure it was really needed because, well, the steering is so damn light. You know, in this car, it's a, it's a mid-engine car, technically. It's just like a Ferrari. And, uh, yeah, like, I didn't uh, expect the steering to be that light when I first took it. Like, that, that felt, it felt almost like as if the wheels were in the air, you know, like, absolutely no effort whatsoever. So, it's nice, it's nice. But it's really, uh, let me just find first the ticket for my, because I'm not sure where is the ticket. Where did I get the fucking ticket? Oh, here, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's basically a Ferrari. Uh, uh, yeah, so the, the front wheels are really 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 light and it's a bit surprising when you have like absolutely no resistance at all from the wheels <laughs> and the steering is not exactly it's it's precise I mean it's it's that's not the point you know it grabs well but it just it's, I think it's too light that's like <laughs> really, I've never yeah maybe like older Cadillac and stuff like that you get the steering that's just light but uh, usually you don't have that up. Yeah, 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 I give you my ticket, don't worry. Alright. And the engine is warm, so we're gonna do a little acceleration of our like Ferrari van. Second gear into third. Suspension are good, everything is nice. Uh, what else? Uh, third gear acceleration is pretty, really pretty decent. Oops, sorry, I drive a mini all the time now, so I'm not used to that acceleration. Seven up, seven thousand and a half into third. But uh, you can see no bumping from the uh, suspension. Suspension really good. Everything is very nice on this one, really. Uh, does the so how does it work? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get the volume. Up on the radio. I don't think the speakers are connected. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well, sorry about that. So, yeah, radio works. Uh, yeah, only the air conditioning will need to probably just be charged, as I said. Uh, the idling goes up, so that means there's pressure in there. So, it's probably fine 
uh, but we'll see if there's a leak. Uh, I will ask if it can be just like quickly charged to see if it leaks and if it stays in position. Because here they don't like usually when the R12 technically it's not legal to charge it in Japan, so we're not going to be doing it ourselves. <coughs> but uh, so yeah, R12 vehicles in Japan uh, they may maybe there's no they are not called anymore. But since you cannot uh, officially charge them, uh, and you have to convert to R144A, uh, a lot of air conditioning in many older vehicles actually still work. But well, there's just no more, uh, no more Freon in there. Uh, so, how much time do I have left on the video? I have only like 3 minutes 20 of SD card left. But uh, yeah, we're back in traffic. So as you can see, temperature still stays little. Well, maybe you cannot see it, I'm not sure. But this, that's the one here, the temperature. That's the gas just over there. I was like completely empty. I hope I can make it home. Well, not home, but back to Magazaki Uh That's, yeah, it's like just still in the cold. It doesn't, uh, it, it's a fairly cold weather for Japan. So it doesn't warm up much right now. So if you live in the middle of the desert, yeah, it won't overheat, that's for sure. But yeah, it's no, it's a, it's a really, it's a decent little van. It's really, really good. One of the best one we've had in a while, in spite of little scratches and stuff like that. Mechanically, it's really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to say, unfortunately. Hmm. So I don't know. Well, uh, I'm gonna stop the video here. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment, or uh, you can reach me like through a Magazaki Motors website. Uh, ideally, I'm very fast to reach uh, through Facebook. Uh, just search for a Magazaki Motor on uh, on Facebook, and you'll find you'll find me. Uh, but I do answer. I do check for uh, new comments and stuff like that. Uh, also regularly on YouTube. So, so well, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, this van is still available for now. And, uh, well, till next time, bye bye.